Hi guys, thanks for stopping by today. My name's April and welcome to my channel. This is The Crafty Catholic. So for today, we are kind of wrapping up our Easter celebrations in our home and we are headed into ordinary time. So I'm going to be doing some sunflower crafts. They'll just be a bright way to kind of start off our summer decor. So let's get started. For this first craft, I am using a variety of sizes of wooden dowels. So I've got some skewers, I've got some small and medium dowels from the Dollar Tree, and I also have some paint sticks from sponge paint brushes. So when the brush is all hard and used up, I just pitch it, but I keep the little wood handles. So that's what those thicker ones are. And since they are the shortest, I'm using them as my guide and I'm using my miter shears just to trim all of those other sticks and dowels and skewers so that they are the same height as the paintbrush sticks, if that makes sense. And uh, I'm not really counting, I'm just kind of making a good sized pile of each size stick and you'll see in a minute um, how many I end up with. So here's what I ended up with and I've got a piece of floral foam that I'm going to use to stick the um, little pieces in. I've got a variety of yellow paint since my theme is sunflower I'm using um, five different um, I'm using five different shades of yellow and you can use whatever you've got on hand it it really doesn't matter but I'm using the same shades through all of these projects so that they will be consistent they'll tie together nicely since these sticks are kind of hard to paint I have stuck them into the styrofoam block and I'm going to use that to paint each group so I took a few out of each pile so I've got a variety of sizes and I am just painting them top bottom all around make sure you get the ends of them and um, I'll let them dry I'll flip them over and give them a second coat and get the little bit that's down in the styrofoam covered and I'm going to do this for each of those five colors now I've got some green paints here and it's just another assortment of acrylic green paint I've got my Waverly plaster I'm going to use that as my base coat and one of these round gift boxes from Dollar Tree. So the white really is just to cover those stripes. Hopefully they won't show through but in case they did I didn't didn't want that bright colors peeking out. And then I'm going to use these greens just to give it kind of a, I'm going for a leafy a leafy look. So I'm using the lightest one and I'm doing all of this while the paint is wet so it's really blending together and just all of, all of that paint is just smushing together and making new colors and I right that's how leaves are so they're not solid green they've got striations and streaks of all different colors so that's kind of the look I'm going for and only the top part of this will show after we get the sticks glued on so I'm just playing with it until I'm happy and I like that. So I'm going to set that aside to dry. Now I apologize I lost the first part of the footage but what I'm doing now is I after all those sticks have dried I am just gluing them onto this gift box and I am lining them up at the top. The bottom I can kind of sand that down and fudge it a little bit later but I wanted to get a really even line across the top and I'm not paying any attention to which color I've got or which size I've got although I don't want a bunch of the same color or sizes next to each other so I'm just trying to get um, a variety of them kind of spread out around this can not a can it's a gift box it's a cardboard gift box. I don't know what I'm saying. When I'm all done with this, I'm going to take one of the glass hurricane jars 
or vases from Dollar Tree, and they are the exact size of these gift boxes. So even if you didn't want to paint it, if you just had one of these round gift boxes that you thought was cute, you can set that glass vase down in there and make a really cute and easy um, kind of upgrade to that Dollar Tree vase. And now you can see I'm just fitting in the last few And there we go. It's all done. Except for the bottom. And I had one extra piece. So for the bottom, I'm using the lid from the same gift box and tracing it onto some brown felt. And then I am cutting that out. And then I'm going to use my hot glue to adhere that to the bottom of the gift box. And this helps with some of those uneven pieces that are sticking out. And also it makes it so whatever you set it on, it's not gonna scratch it. Now these are a couple bundles of flowers that I cut apart. They are all from Walmart. One was a mixed green. All those different greens came on the same bunch. And then the sunflowers were three to a bunch. And I just couldn't find sunflowers at my Dollar Tree. So Walmart, 97 cents, it's still a good deal, and I happen to be a Walmart. You know how that goes. So I put some shredded paper into the um, vase, and that really is because um, these stems just weren't very long, so they weren't going all the way to the bottom of that vase. I wanted them to be up a little bit. And I'm just sticking them in there. I figure a sunflower bunch is supposed to look like wildflowers. So I'm just arranging them in there. Kind of messy, but still cute. And here's a look at the completed bouquet and vase. Now I did go back and I stuck a couple daisies into the bouquet. And I took a piece of brown lace and wrapped it around the yellow part on the sticks. But other than that, it is complete. I hope you like it. For the next craft, I'm going to be using a page out of this Blessings Bloom calendar from Dollar Tree. And I'm using the cardboard that came in the calendar as my backing. So I'm just swiping a bunch of glue, just regular old Elmer's glue stick, onto this paper. And then I'm going to use that to adhere it to the cardboard. Smooth it out really good so that I don't have any bubbles or wrinkles. And then I am going to let that dry. So now I'm gonna use my miter box. And if you don't have one of these, this is the best one that I've found. It's by Stanley. It has this little lip right here so that you can hook it onto the edge of your table. And it has two black pegs that help hold your the piece that you're cutting into the box. And I'm using this piece of molding that we had left over from a thing we had done at church. So I am, I've tried to move the camera so that you can see what I, I'm doing. But it has marked on it the 45 degree angles. And I'm making a frame for that calendar page. So that's what I want, it's 45 degrees. And I'm not gonna speed this up just so you can see exactly how long it takes. I wanna say it was like, it was under 30 seconds to cut through this molding. And I'm not really pressing that hard. Like I could have stood up and put a lot more pressure and gotten it done really quick. But I'm not even having to hold the wood. That peg does the whole thing. And um, this molding, you can get it like at Lowe's or Home Depot. I think it is crown molding. You can see there on the back it says first grade PSR. So when my husband and I were teaching um, PSR, the kids would have pencils 
that would roll all over the place. So we bought this crown molding, and if you flip it over, it's got a little bit of a, of a dip in it, and we used them as pencil trays. Worked out perfect, so there's a little tip. All right, so I am done. That's, that's how long it took me to cut that. And um, you can see I've got a nice 45 degree angle now. So I'm going to use the calendar page to cut the length of these and I did the 45 degrees on all four cor on both edges of all four pieces. And then I'm just using a Dollar Tree sanding block to kind of smooth those out. I'm going to be stapling them and gluing them together so I just want to make sure that I've got all those rough edges so that they'll make a nice um, they'll meet up nice on those corners. Then I'm going to just kind of dry fit them around that calendar page, make sure that um, that they do fit. I'm not saying I cut it right the first time, all the time, but it's pretty good. I can live with it anyway. So now I'm going to take the four pieces and using my staple gun, I'm going to flip it over and put two staples on each corner. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. All right, the next thing is to use some wood glue and it can be any wood glue. I got mine off my husband's workbench, but you can use Dollar Tree or Lowe's or Walmart, it doesn't matter. And I am just squirting it down into those gaps and then I used a baby wipe to wipe off the extra and taped it together to dry. So moving back to the calendar page, this page I liked the verse and I liked the flowers, but they were all in pink. And since I'm doing sunflowers, I wanted yellow. So I'm just going to paint it, guys. You can totally do this. Um, I'm using those same yellows that I used on the first project. And I'm using the flowers that are there as my pattern. So I'm going in with a lighter color. And then I'll go back with um, a darker color to do the little detail lines and I will use the lightest yellow to, just to do some highlights. These flowers are very forgiving. They're abstract and kind of watercolor looking anyway, so you do not have to be really exact with it. And I'm not doing all of them. I'm just doing a few to kind of bring some of that color that I'm, that I'm using into this picture. And I will use my um, Waverly, I think it's the Antique Wax, to do the brown centers so one of the I mean it's a great thing about crafting right you can make it your own and I liked this but it wasn't exactly what I wanted so I'm just tweaking it just a little bit why not I'm not letting the um, paint dry in between so that it gets a nice blendy look I, f I feel like that makes it look even more hand painted I know this is not the most exciting craft to watch, but I did want you to kind of see what I was doing. I think sometimes I feel like, oh, this was a professional that painted this, and that's not me. I am not a professional, but I think I did a good job. I was worried if, when I first started doing this that it would make the paper bubble, but I think because it's got that glossy coating on it, it really didn't. I mean, there's, there's a couple places you can see where the light's hitting it right there that it does look bubbled, but when it dried, it was fine. I think I'm gonna do this again. I have 11 more of those pages. And I thought this was a great scripture, too, for spring and summer, all things have become new, 1 Corinthians. 
and the green background goes perfectly for ordinary time. I have to watch myself when I'm doing things like this because I'll turn my project and then I'll reach across to do something on the other side and I'll set my arm right in what I just did. But I lucked out on this one and didn't do that. And for the final touch, I'm just going back in with that Waverly Brown antique wax and touching up the centers of those what are now sunflowers, I guess. They're not sunflower shaped, but that's okay. What is it? Crafty Lini says, just do it until your eyes are happy. So they're sunflowers to me and they make me happy. So now it is finished and I will need to let it dry, but you don't have to wait for that. So now it's dry and I am looking at it in reference to the frame. It is a little bit bigger and so I'm going to use my paper cutter just to trim off some of the edges. This worked well because I also wanted to trim off the hole that was at the top of the picture from it being a calendar. So, but I didn't want to trim it too early and then it not fit my frame. So I trimmed it afterwards and now I'm just going to glue it in the back with my glue gun. I'm just going to go all around the four edges and put a bead of glue there. There's no glass in this frame so it doesn't have to be really, really sturdy. It just has to be enough to not fall out. I just checked to make sure none of the glue came through on the front and it didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the sides. And here it is. I love it. But I would like some more sunflowers. So I am using some more of those picks from Walmart and I've got the sunflowers and then I've also got a daisy pick. So I decided since there were the other flowers in this that I would also put some daisies in there. I'm going to cut some of the leaves apart and use those as well. So I'm just kind of playing with it till I get an arrangement that I like. And then I am going to um, use my, oh, my heat gun. Let me tell you about this. So did you know you can kind of fix, quote unquote, um, fake flowers with your heat gun. I don't know if a hair dryer would work or not, but you just use that um, that little tool, like see how it's all kind of crumpled up and stuff? You just blow it with your heat gun and it opens up. You can do this with wrinkles on um, ribbon. I've, I've used this also for that. And I've also used it to shape the stems of the flowers if they're not wired but you want that plastic stem to go a different direction just heat it up with your heat gun and bend it to where you want it so tip for the day all right now I'm going to arrange those and glue them down And here we have the finished picture. Oh. I love how the frame came out. I love how the painting on the calendar page came out. And I am definitely doing this again. All right. I will admit that this last one is not much of a DIY. But um, this is a wreath that I normally have hanging um, above our fireplace and I just wanted to tie it in with these other two projects because they are both going um, on our, on my mantle. So I took um, an old piece of greenery from Christmas be only because I couldn't find my pipe cleaners um, but you could totally do this with pipe cleaners so I glued that on the back of the flower and here's that trick again to make those flowers open up. I think I think I'm going to show you both of them here for, in a minute. So, just 
just so you can see the difference. Um, on the back of the daisies, I'm going to glue a little bit of that garden wire from Dollar Tree. I love that stuff. It comes with its own holder and cutter. It's great. I'm going to glue that to the back of the um, daisies. And then I'm going to stick all three of those flowers into that wreath that you just saw. All right, here's a final look of how these three projects um, look on my mantle. And I am really pleased with the way they turned out. They brighten it up just a little bit and make it feel that summertime is just right around the corner if it would ever quit raining here in southern Missouri. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit like. If you feel like it, um, hit subscribe. And I will leave you with this Irish blessing. May your troubles be less and your blessings be more and nothing but happiness come through your door. Bye guys.